To keep things simple, we can consider an atom to be a nucleus with electrons orbiting it. It's not a perfect model, but it's good enough for this chapter. Therefore, we'd have a nucleus at the center and orbiting the nucleus, electrons, probably more than one. But what we're going to be interested in in this chapter is the nuclear structure. And this here is the nucleus, which is a clump of protons and neutrons, which collectively are referred to as nucleons. For a given chemical element, sometimes denoted by X, you often see two numbers here called A and Z. And they're there to tell you how many protons, neutrons, and nucleons are in the chemical element. So A is the mass number. And what A tells you is the total number of nucleons, so the total number of protons and neutrons, while Z, which is called the atomic number, tells you the total number of protons, which means, of course, that if you want to find the number of neutrons, all you have to do is compute A minus Z. And of course, not to leave out the electrons, you can also figure out what the number of electrons is. Because if your element has a net charge Q that is zero, it's neutral, then it must be the case that it has as many electrons as protons. And therefore, it has Z electrons. Of course, if it has a charge equal to little Q times E, with little q positive or negative, then there would be z minus q electrons. In other words, if you know a and z, and you know the charge of your element, then you can figure out the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. Now, we could take an example. For instance, we could consider H plus. Hydrogen has a mass number of 1 and an atomic number of 1, which means that there's one nucleon and that the only nucleon there is is a proton because z is equal to 1. A minus z is going to be 0, which means that there are no neutrons. And of course, because here we have plus 1 as a charge, q is equal to 1, and we have z minus 1, which is 1 minus 1 electrons, no electrons. And you know that from chemistry. You know that H plus is basically a proton floating around. It lost its only electron, and there are no neutrons. Now, one last thing we have to define after looking at this example is the case where we have one proton, but also one neutron. Now, that would be H. Z is the number of protons, so one. But now we have a proton and a neutron, so two like this. You could even do plus. There's no electron, all right? But this has a different nucleus than this. And these two elements are called isotopes. Now, they're isotopes because they have the same z, but different a. In other words, they have the same number of protons, but they do not have the same number of neutrons. What it means, though, is that since they have the same number of protons, two isotopes have the same chemical structure and therefore the same chemical properties. But they're really two separate chemical elements. And in fact, this is no longer called hydrogen. This is called deuterium. And these two are isotopes. One last comment is that A is called the mass number because it's the total number of protons and neutrons. And over 99% of the atom mass is 
from protons and neutrons. In other words, electrons contribute to the total mass, but only marginally, and that's why A is called the mass number. But we'll revisit that eventually. So what you need to remember is what A and Z are and how to find the number of protons, nucleons, neutrons, and electrons for a given element, and also remember what isotopes are.